For centuries, we thought that everything rotates around Earth. Then we thought everything rotates around the Sun. What do we think now? What rotates around what? Let's talk about this. And welcome to What the Math. <laughs> Hello guys and girls and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be investigating things rotating around other things. Now this may not actually make sense yet but let's just talk about it. So historically what we know about so-called geocentrism and hel heliocentrism is that um, for, like I said, for thousands of years people thought that everything rotates around Earth. So when people looked into the sky they thought that the world rotates around us. They thought that stars are basically just kind of over there in some sort of a sphere and they're kind of rotating around us because that's what it looks like if you look at it from Earth, right? Like, I mean, even if you look at it right now, it, that's exactly what it looks like. So they thought Saturn is essentially just flying around Earth and so on. And this is what we call geocentrism, the idea of things rotating around Earth. Now, many people actually thought this was true, including big people like Aristotle and, uh, and Plato. Um, many people believed this was true because this is what it seemed like and even math seemed to make sense when you were looking in the skies. But now we know it's not really true. And the first person to actually say that this wasn't true was also a Greek in the th uh, third century before Christ, in other words, um, 2,300 years ago, Aristarchus of Samos proposed that I think, or he thought, that it was, this wasn't true, that things were actually not orbiting Earth, things were orbiting the Sun, because he was able to calculate things really, really precisely using geometry. He was even able to kind of estimate the size of the Sun using geometry, and found the size of Earth relatively precisely as well. And he said that, well, it seems like things are actually orbiting the Sun, not the Earth. But nobody really listened to him and, and for the most part this knowledge was forgotten for another um, almost 2000 years until of course Nicholas Copernicus, a uh, very famous but somewhat persecuted scientist slash astronomer led so-called Copernican revolution where he basically said and observed and proved that it was all about the sun. Things were actually spinning around the sun, orbiting the sun, and not the earth. For that, he was actually almost killed and almost sent to uh, basically prison, in a sense, because the Catholic Church was not happy with his findings. And it actually took almost a century, almost a hundred years, for another scientist, Johannes Kepler, who also has the name Kepler Telescope named after him. Um, he basically elaborated on this. He actually also established that it wasn't even a, a circle circular orbit it was actually an ellipse uh, so it's a very different shape specifically you can see this best with mercury because mercury has a very elliptical orbit um, and right here we can see that it's not actually circular it's an elliptical orbit and so he actually established this idea and he was able to prove this mathematically as well and finally Galileo Galilei uh, presented all of this and proved all of this using his awesome telescope so it was um, these three scientists that essentially established that really it's all about helios it's about the sun we have heliocentric um, solar system where things are orbiting the sun but it was really in the last hundred years that we realized even this model is actually incorrect now in our schools today we don't we're not really taught the new models we're still taught the hel heliocentric model unfortunately where basically this is what our solar system looks like you have the sun in the middle and then the planets orbiting around the sun and usually even even shown in sort of circular orbits in the same plane as well in two-dimensional plane even though if you look from this direction it really doesn't really look um, the same like for example um, uh, bodies like Ceres and the Vesta or uh, Pluto they actually have a very different and or even Neptune they have a somewhat different plane of orbit um, or um, even bigger uh, bigger dwarf planets like obviously Aries which has its own sort of funky orbit that is very very uh, has a very different inclination compared to everything else and so what a lot of the modern scientists from the last uh, century or so specifically William Herschel and um, Friedrich Bezel discovered is that this is really wrong because our sun is actually currently orbiting something else so let's actually zoom out of the, all of this and we're going to go into another simulation here 
called Supernova in Galaxy. So we're gonna click on this and there we go. The sun has been, not the sun, sorry, the star has been supernova and the sun has been born. So we're gonna actually get rid of this sun and place a completely new sun to simulate our solar system. And so this is our Milky Way. I'm gonna rename this to Milky Way so it makes a little bit more sense. Or specifically, this is actually Sagittarius Alpha, uh, because that's the name of our um, black hole. And here is the sun. We're going to zoom into it. It's flying through the galaxy really, really fast. And um, while it's flying through the galaxy, it obviously has planets orbiting around it, right? So we're going to simulate that by placing them right here. I'm going to actually slow down the time because it's flying a little bit too fast. Now, this is not going to be very, very accurate. It's going to be a very rough sort of... Um, simulation but here we go so let's place all of the solar um, objects right around our Sun and here we go so I have just placed on um, the nine objects that I really really like including Pluto of course even though it's not a planet anymore and um, they are now orbiting around the Sun with an inclination of almost 90 degrees it's basically almost perpendicular to the plane of or the vector of motion um, of the Sun in comparison to Milky Way black hole in other words, it sort of looks like this. They're literally just dancing in this kind of a spiral around the sun. Now, this is um, days per second. We're going to accelerate this to... Uh, let's just see if we can go to months per second before the game decides to really slow down on us. And look at that. So look at these beautiful spirals. So the fastest spiral is obviously Mercury. Then the second uh, fastest is Venus. Then we have Earth right here. And then we have Mars. Then we have Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So essentially, this is kind of what it looks like if you were to look at it from sort of a distance or from a different um, star in our galaxy, the motion of our planets would look like this. They are flying relatively fast um, around the galaxy and they're or orbiting the black hole in the center. But every star here also gets a lot of interaction um, from clusters of other stars, from things like dark matter. So every star doesn't actually fly in a straight line. It still wobbles. It goes up and down a lot. It goes left and right. Um, so even this is not particularly accurate. But this is as accurate as I can make it in this particular game. So let's just slow down a little bit just to see what the shapes look like here. And so here we go. So uh, we have Sun, Earth, and um, Mer Mercury and Venus and Mars in the middle. I'm going to look at this, all of this from Earth. And so if you were to stand on Earth as you're flying through the galaxy uh, and you were to kind of see all of the motion happening at the same time, so all of these planets are dancing around each other at ridiculously high speeds. Now, that's what we thought for about, um, I don't know, like 20, 30 years in early 19th century when we discovered that there was a black hole in the middle, when we discovered that uh, galaxies are really big and stars um, uh, orbit around a central black hole in the middle of, um, of the galaxy. But it, it wasn't really long until we realized that even this model is still not really correct because even the galaxies actually move. They move around each other, they move around the universe and even the, the galaxies are actually flying around and flying apart so even this model is a little bit too simplified and all of this is until of course einstein realized that well listen all of these models are way way too simple they're not really going to explain anything because in his mind what it was all about was the reference point so in the end after all this uh, change in models and thinking and trying to understand what's orbiting around what, we realized that it was always the Earth. So in other words, according to Einstein's relativity theory, or principles of relativity that is, um, and this is really in the modern thinking today, there is no specific location that is the center of the universe. Essentially, you are the center of the universe. Everything is around you. Your frame of reference is what is important. And as soon as you start moving, this becomes a new frame of reference. So it's all about motion relative to other motion. And in other words, the modern physics and the modern astro astrophysics and astronomy depends on that. So we can't really teach the, uh, at least at schools, we can't really teach the model that, you know, makes something in the center because that's not true anymore. There is no center at all. Um, you are the center. Uh, if you're in this black hole right here, then this is the center. And if you move out of this galaxy and you're somewhere else, that's going to be the center. So essentially, this is how it works. But before I finish, I actually wanted to 
kind of explain what um, got me thinking about all of this. I was actually exploring various models in this particular game, and I came upon this really cool model. I actually by completely by accident. So, in historical right here, and I'm going to actually quit this. Uh, I'm gonna go in here. This this is a model called Third Stage of Apollo 12 in orbit of Earth in 2003. So I'm gonna just show you what happened here. So this model represents. Um, uh, in 2002, when a, um, an amateur astronomer discovered what he thought was the new moon of Earth. He looked into the sky and he thought he saw a new moon. It ended up being something completely different. It actually ended up being the third stage of Apollo 12 from Apollo 12 mission, which was accidentally uh, placed into a very unstable, um, as you can see here, very unstable orbit around Earth, where essentially it sort of orbits around Earth for a little bit, and then for 40 years it leaves and orbits around the Sun, then it comes back, orbits around Earth again, and so on and so forth every 40 years. Now that's really interesting, but not as interesting as what I'm about to show you. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna wait for this to fly away from us. Okay, for some reason it didn't fly away. It was supposed to fly away. It uh, usually it gets um, a boost from the moon and actually escapes into outer orbit. But I'm gonna erase this for a second so it doesn't actually um, slow down my computer. I'm gonna go on Earth right now. Slow down time. Oh, actually, no, we're not gonna slow down time. We're gonna look into the sky. We're gonna look into the sky and see what we see. For some unknown reason, and this is actually absolutely awesome, this simulation right here is geocentric. You actually get to see what it looks like from Earth, um, if assuming that you know geocentric model is completely correct. So this is actually a simulation of geocentric model. Look at that. Everything, including the sun, actually orbits Earth, and it's beautiful. I had no idea this model was even in the game, and I don't really even know how they made this. But what you're observing is essentially what people believed in for thousands of years. Now. In essence, this is both geocentric model and also the modern Einsteinian model of uh, relativity, where we know that it's all about the frame of reference. So, if I would, um, I'm going to run this for a few years actually, just so you get to see what it looks like from our planet. But you can kind of see what um, you you get to see um, over the years if you look at Aries right now. You get this kind of a snake that sort of advances through the sky, and it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful uh, looking sort of pathway for each and every one of these planets. So here is Maki Maki right there doing his own, uh, her own snake, um, uh, Home as well. And all of them have this very beautiful pathway. And this is something we don't really even realize is happening because we always think of planetary orbits as just straight lines. This is what we're taught at school. This is what we kind of imagine in our minds when we think of orbits, but they're not. They're not straight. They're sort of snaky because as we're orbiting around the sun, they're orbiting around the sun as well. And so what we actually see is this. And the most beautiful one, I think, is from... Oh, here's uh, here's Pluto as well, doing its own snakes. But the most beautiful one, um, and this is actually probably the ones that we usually see the most, are obviously Mercury and Venus. Um, if, I, if I try to... I'm going to try to find them in the sky right now. Let's try to find them. So here's some of them. And I need to slow down time a little bit. All right, so here's Mercury. Let's actually follow it along. Okay, I can't do it from the planet. I have to do it from outside the planet. And we're going to just look at what it does in the sky. And this is why um, it used to be known as a traveler star. star or sorry, not tra Is it traveler star or traveler's planet? I don't remember the exact term. But basically because it goes... It, um, it moves in the sky so erratically, so in such a funny motion. It, it, it actually exhibits something called retrograde motion also known as parallax motion, when you see something in relation to something else. So this is Mercury, and you'll see it move backwards in a second. Uh, because it actually, um, the way it moves, it's it's, it's just, um, it's so fast, right? It, it has Its year is a lot faster than our year, and so it does these loops and circles in the sky. And so that's Mercury. Uh, Venus does something a little bit similar, but a little bit slower, because its year is a little longer than Mercury's. And so, what we do see is essentially, if I zoom out here, what we see is this. This is what it looks like for us in, in our sort of, um, in our sky. Mercury does these loops. Um, and Venus does these loops as well, but a little bit slower. So does Mars, much slower loops. So does Ceres, so does Jupiter, and so on. So look at these awesome <laughs> curls everywhere. There's Saturn, there's Uranus, there's Neptune. Um, and so, 
this is actually, I personally think this is probably a more realistic model of modern astronomy. I think maybe schools should possibly focus on this, even though this is really, it goes against logic, right? You're basically teaching them geocentric model, but it's not just geocentric. It's actually, it's based on relativity principle, which, which states that you're supposed to be measuring motion from your frame of reference. We are on Earth. We need to measure it from Earth. We can't go into, you know, galaxy and try to measure it from um, the central black hole because that would make sense. We can't measure it from some point in the universe because that would make sense either. And obviously we can't measure it from the sun because that also is not accurate. But this is very accurate. This shows you the motion in relation to Earth and it also shows you the beautiful dance in the sky that most people don't even realize is happening around them because we always think of straight lines. Anyway, so this is what I wanted to talk about in this short video. Hopefully it kind of made sense and made you think about the universe and the motion of planets and stars in our galaxy. And hopefully now you'll know a little bit more about how things in our solar system and in our galaxy move around each other. And so to answer the question, so who was right? Well, you know what? They were all right. None of those scientists, none of those astronomers or math mathematicians from ancient Greece were wrong. They were all right. And because after all of these years, we came to a conclusion that, you know what, it's all of those models. Every single one of those models was completely correct. We were never wrong. And it's both geocentric, heliocentric, galactocentric, and so on and so forth. So even though Einstein didn't specifically say that all of those models are kind of correct, his relativity principle kind of said, you guys are not wrong. It's all good. Be friends, be happy. This is beautiful. Just enjoy the view. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like this video and check out some of the other Universe Unbox 2 videos I've posted in this link right here. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the beautiful universe. I'm going to accelerate time and let's see how these beautiful planets dance around each other in this awesome twirly loopy dance in the sky. Give me you later, guys, and bye-bye.